yeah i mean we say it a lot and i feel like we harp on about it quite a bit at the best of times but dust 2 is a risky old map pick it comes up time and again we talk about it in every pre-game segment it is a map where a couple of individuals even a single player going off the rails can really make or break your series and well we are diving into things very very shortly so it's going to be a question of which individual can pull up who can be that man to step up and be counted and both of these teams have got plenty of talent who can do so Heavy on the armor here in the beginning anyway for Entropic. Forrester, I would imagine, is going to get a kit. No, he also wants Kevlar. Okay, so they might just bring this right to Falcons. We could even see a mid-push maybe in towards lower. Nades-wise, there's not really that heavy of an investment either for Falcons. A smoke and a flash over towards tunnels, and well, we'll see exactly what the goal is. They're going to slow it down anyway. And, well, what is going on? Hmm. Has a stop being called, maybe? It feels like it, doesn't it? It looks like it a bit as well. It could get a little interesting, though, because Nickelback's taking damage here. It does look like a stop's been called immediately, just judging by the CT's positioning. And our wonderful production team have confirmed that we do have a tech pause because a player has managed to reboot their PC. So it's good to know that, you know, even the professionals at the highest level of the game still have the classic problems of cat stood on PC, rebooted it. We're going to have to wait a little bit to get started. And it gives us a little bit more time to chill and just chat about how things are going, Dean. Yeah, well, I mean, we haven't got to actually kick the game off, so we can't talk much about how that's going quite yet, but... Overall, I think it's been, as you said, a very eventful season. Maybe not all of the teams we thought would make it true made it true, but there was there was weird circumstances all over the place, like some forfeit losses and such, which you don't usually see in this level. Obviously, there was circumstances that required it. I believe some of the RMR stuff was being played by K23, was it? They were traveling or something along those yeah, lines? Yeah, there was all sorts of funkiness with travel timings and getting into countries and visas. Yeah. and It's the typical circuit. I think that made Group D definitely a bit less exciting than it could have been, but there's a decent chance we might have still came out with the same two teams. I think we probably would have just had a bit more of a fight for it. Either way, wondering what player it was that managed to somehow turn their PC off. Wow, who looks still? All of the T side players have worked their way towards A, so it's definitely oh, not go. them. We have dropped. And now we've played the classic game of we know all these players, we cast them all the time, but who's been dropped from that five-man list? I don't know how I always manage to fail at this. <laughs> it's Hadji, a, isn't it? It's a classic, isn't it? Well, yeah, no, all Hadji's the Falcons are here. Oh, no, we've got two Pythons. Wait, what happened to Entropic? We've only got four on the CT side. That oh, we're fine here, boys. We are flying. I think we've lost two now. We've lost a Hadji, and we've lost a Nickelback, so... Apparently, multiple cats pressing multiple power buttons, uh, which is always fun. But we will just have to wait ever so patiently as, of course, the match medics get in, sort things out. We start to work our way back towards a start of this series. It looked like an intriguing buy from Falcons there as well. It was a B. It looked like a set play towards B to start the pistol. And this is where those mind games start to come in, right? Because Entropic might have heard some sound cues, might have heard a little bit of something coming in towards those upper tunnels. So would have had an inkling of an idea it was going to be a B here. And then Falcons, interestingly, as soon as the pause was called, all five of them actually went out A long and showed face towards the A site, which I thought was very unusual. Because you had five players in towards B. Normally, when you see the pause caused, they'll just go out towards spawn. They'll sort of, you know, jump around, waste a bit of time, wait for everything to be fixed. But Falcon sort of very deliberately disengaged from B and went out A long, showed themselves in A long, which is a bit of an interesting one. But look, we don't know when these guys are going to get back just yet. We got some PCs to reboot. Who knows how long that'll take? So we're going to throw it to a very quick break, guys. And I promise you, when we get back, we will have an actual game for you.
We're back. It's 2-0. We're not back. We're back again. It's 2-0. Everything's gone wrong. And Falcons, well, they are starting their map pit with a bang. We saw nothing of the opening rounds, but we don't care because it's 3-0 and Falcons are looking clean, Dean. Yeah, we're here now. That's what's important. There was some GoTV issues. It happens every now and again. It's the nature of uh, technology, so not much that could be done. Either way, an impressive 3-0, and we do, importantly, get to get into the action just as it, it kicks up, as we really get the weapons going, as the full buy round comes through. It looks like, at the very least, some damage was done throughout those rounds, as you can see with a few kills coming in from Entropic. Enough to ensure that this is not a bonus round at all for Falcons. They are pretty much fully in on this one. They would barely be scraping together a buy in the follow and if they were to lose this, so it's a very crucial round for both sides. And you can see the initiative being taken on... On the behalf of both sides, indeed. It's Crad who's going for here for Entropic. Just as Forrester, I believe, peeks in towards Upper. Didn't even get vision. Just spam them through the smoke. A perfectly timed nade should do decent damage onto two players. And with that, they can happily just keep this massive advantage they have now. Even without being aware of that bit of extra damage they got. A really nice opening set for Entropic, as you said. A couple of well-timed aggressions. Net them the opening kill, and now Falcons out mid, working with the man disadvantage, make it two, although very quickly wrestled back. And again, that B-site does start to look just a little bit vulnerable. Mid B-smoke goes down, they're trying to bait aggression out of Entropic, but Forrester is for now having none of it. Maka remains posted on the angle outside of those B-doors, but currently not giving anything away. And with 50 seconds left on the clock, that man disadvantage still the way of Falcons. They're having to try and work their way into some kind of an execute. 
And Tropic have actually abandoned the B bomb site pretty much entirely at this point, but with Masuta and Python deep in towards mid, for now it looks like a solid enough play. They are going to try and regroup this one back towards their teammate in towards those tunnels, try and get some kind of a split into the B bomb site moving. But this is a nasty little crossfire for Entropic. Forrester picks up the early kill. And at this point, Maka and Masuta, what can you realistically expect of them? Flashbang goes in, but the flank already starting to make its way up those lower tunnels as they look to save the rifles. Everything will be denied. And that is a gorgeous first rifle round for Entropic. As I had mentioned at the beginning as well, while there's economy on a few players, it at most might tempt them to buy up a, a few pistols, I was thinking, and maybe some nades to try and prop up their buy in the next round. But no, they end up fully going for it. Okay. NBK had already invested a small bit. It didn't look like he was fully into it. Eventually, though, he will go ahead and get the Kevlar and pistol. Everyone else buying up as well. And it gives them one rifle alongside those pistols. Not ideal when you've got a pretty secure buy with all of the nades being pretty flush here as well for Entropic. So... We'll see what can be done. Maybe some decent openings from the Deegs. The AK as well, of course, in there with a chance. And they clearly want to favor towards B in the early stages. That is a very deep molly, though. We'll stop anyone from crossing, sure. But Forrester likely is going to find a fight against multiple players here in a moment. And he chooses an awkward diamond to take the smoke out. Works to get it down in time. But he took some nade damage. And now it's all on Mir. Needs to get more than the one. And he's not able. It's an Arquez instead who tries to keep the numbers equal. But he's going very aggressive in this 3-on-3 three three and unfortunately spammed up through the door on his attempt to escape and keep the numbers equal. He leaves it just on Crad and Nickelback and honestly with the smokes just going down as well. Obviously with the bomb not being planted they're not going to consider the save yet but I was going to say I'm not too sure that this retake is going to be all that possible. Crab wants it. Lurk smoke to give himself an angle will work out onto MBK. Levels the standings on 3 HP admittedly. But as Nickelback deals with Maka suddenly this is on. Hadji left. 1v2 to contend with. If Crowd can bait the positioning out, this will look very simple, and indeed it does. Nickelback from high trades it down. And that is another very well-executed retake from Entropic. Just finding those individual picks. Anakes, as you said, maybe a little keen going back in for the second, but his first kill keeps them on some kind of standing inside of the site. And then a little bit of magic from Crad to find the opening pick gets them back into that B-bomb site. A second round in Tropic had no business winning. And it's one that breaks the economy of Falcons near enough entirely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I understand the, the peak. It's something I definitely would have done. But unfortunately, Narquez has been held to slightly higher standards. <laughs> but yeah, even that first kill, just keeping it in a, a doable position. I, I, I maybe gave up hope a little bit too soon myself on the 2-on-3 retake, but... Obviously, good work from Crad and Co. being able to get that one done. The initial kill from Crad really was what kicked it off, creeping around the edge of the smoke. And Arquez, though, up against some pistols, might have easy pickings here at top mid. Let's have a look. There's the first. A few more opportunities are definitely going to come his way. He will continue to land, and that's just mean. And these pistols aren't really going to yeah. be too much of a hassle at all. He's got himself four. All right. I mean, guys eventually you decide will we stop peeking this op on mid i mean in theory though it's the best player to give the kills to because he's only getting 100 per kill with that op so i feel like it's one of those ones where you're hoping you're not going against such a flicky orper and you're just hoping that by just driving by enough times he's going to miss one and then you'll get your opportunity but coming up against an orper like anakes it doesn't feel like the play he's just clay pigeon shooting the ward stop mid nice and simple like you said, I suppose, you know, you can look at it from the angle of, okay, bit less loss bonus. But they invest Eagles into that. I think Falcons would have been hoping for a couple of picks at the very least to make it expensive. And a fast play out long is the response of the previous failures. Full long control taken in the opening 10 seconds, but the aggression is there to counter it. Straight out top mid goes Crad. And he can take as much control as he wants at this point if he can stay alive, which he can't. Masuta. Able to deal with the issue of the backstab and by his team, a man advantage they've not seen in a long old while. Scuffed smoke as well. This starts to get very awkward. MBK has been found out towards B. Escapes with his life for now, however. Molotov to follow it up is very intelligent and he keeps that man advantage for the time being for the Falcons. Yeah, and to keep it with them as well as, of course, having that presence outside long, which means that hopefully they shouldn't be too trapped if they decide they want to fall back and maybe reassess the situation for now, though. More, uh, working their way up long, and a very aggressive peek from Anarchez again is punished. Forrester tried to do something as the cross was coming in, but now as the smokes go down, surely this is already a save being called for, and yeah, you can see they're not having anything to do with this A-bomb site anymore. Backing away, they know there's one player over in the spawn that they're trying to 
maybe deal with a little bit. I'm only saying that because Nickelback went up towards the uh, spawn here rather than just going through the lower tunnels to join with his teammate and save his weapon. So clearly he wants this frag free AK. I mean, nice little upgrade. Yeah. I think that retake was doomed because of the fact MBK was still here just toying with Mir in towards upper tunnels, making it utterly impossible Even if he to wasn't, get any kind of a rotation. Yeah, I mean, it feels like Entropic are willing to give it a go, but... Nice try, Haji. We back away, and Falcons... That one was, again, it felt a little loose from Entropic. It was, you know, Anakes had utility on his teammates. He had the potential to smoke himself off, give himself an angle, flash himself into it, maybe. Went for the peak dry, and, well, to be fair, I think, blinded or not, four crosshairs coming the other way, you're probably going down. Here's Falcons the lead once again. Their map pick, of course, and as the buy comes out, it will start to drain that economy of Entropic. 1,900 loss burners coming up for the next. They could probably just about skim a buy with mere dropping. After that, they are going to be down to the eco. So an opportunity for Falcons now to start inflicting some real punishment to this CT side. I like the way they're approaching that boost as well from the other side rather than over the boxes where you normally see it. Just trying to swap it up as much as they can. Peeking in towards lower though, this molly might be timed pretty decently to slow down the progression of what looks like it's going to be a fairly standard default coming in from Falcons. Heavy presence around tunnels, sure, but I'm not too sure they're ready to actually commit off it. Yeah, it looks like they want to move through lower, just kind of slowly attain the map control. They have showed a little bit of presence around the tunnels early on as well, which is maybe prompting some rotations, as you can see already, with Nickelback moving over. So this might work in their favor. Let's see how quick they move in on this control, though. If they can catch Krat around short, you've also got an Arquez pushed up on long. Opportunities for isolated fights, really. Three man lean towards B as well does leave that A bomb site mighty vulnerable. Pressure on the shoulders of Anakes. Coming up against a lot of bodies here. Python shows a little too much shoulder. Will go down early. Anakes able to escape for now. Blinded has to reset. Haji wants this kill as well. Just dancing at the moment. Takes the leg on the chin. Haji able to deal with Anakes. Krad does grab one kill in response in the meanwhile. But the man advantage now there for the CT side. This is a retake they're going to give a go. I'm still yet to make that transfer too as Maka on that AWP looks to lock down the cross. Bomb still got to get there though. Big shot from Maka. That will allow the bomb to start making his transfer now as actually CT side continuing to drop into fights. Forrester wanted to take that CT control back. Loses it only for Mir to immediately arm wrestle it back into control of the CT side. And with 10 seconds left, they've got to get this bomb down now, Falcons. No more time for messing around, but Entropic haven't actually got any utility to deny. Bomb will be planted, and this kill may well be critical. Maka aggressing into short, misses his shot, leaves Masuta isolated on low HP inside of the site. Got to deal with two angles at once. The worst possible crossfire for him to try and connect onto. Nickelback not giving him a glimpse of that short peak for now. Just running those AK bullets down. He's got one, though. Now isolated, Nickelback charging in from short, but Masuta's having none of it. A big clutch from the youngster. Nets Falcons their fifth. And look at the economy for Entropic. Shoves them right onto a rough one. Yeah, necessary and nasty clutch there after what was an uncharacteristic miss from Maka, I've got to say as well. Didn't even have a planted for short. I mean, obviously you want a bit of control going into those, uh, those after plants and preferably not giving up both long and short where you can be pinched in on, but... It was just weird that they didn't initially work off of each other, but they salvage it. And while well, the buy coming back in from Entropic is a little bit limited, it's not too bad. The nades could be a lot better. They obviously have a scout on an Arquez. He doesn't even have Kevlar behind that. And Mir is having a real tough time trying to get himself up on that box right there. So he'll eventually have to just concede defeat. Gravity was too much for him to handle and revert back into a fairly... Uh, I was going to say a fairly standard setup, but they actually have two players focused around mid for the moment. Interesting idea. They've been punished in mid once before. Clearly an area Falcons want to try and push the pressure into. Anakes, this time on only a scout, will have to play a little more passively. Allow that rifle of Mir to potentially rotate in. Falcons doing a good job of bleeding that CT utility, though. Again, these very limited buys relying heavily on the firepower, which Krad does open things up with. Masuta next up on the chopping block with a beautiful flashbang in. Lucky to be alive. 
feet spotted, however. Will mean he goes down and Crad makes it two. On two HP, buys a three on five. Falcons again scrambling. T-Side hasn't looked to click so far. Haji is on the edge of the smoke, but it's a crossfire for the CT side that isn't going to break. Mir gets the freebie. But Maka and Python, I mean, how much can you expect here? Python grabs one, but he loses his support immediately. A second before he goes down is decent damage, but nothing more than that. And the real opportunity passes them by there in Tropic. We're on the ropes economically, but they managed to scramble it through. And actually managed to inflict largely the same fate on Falcons. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean... Thankfully, Crowd was able to step up. He had a fantastic round right there, but I don't know how much I actually loved the setup they were going for, especially with how limited the nades was. They, uh, the, the nades were, rather, they're splitting it up. They could have maybe focused the slightly weaker firepower and the lesser utility together towards either short or long, but they had kind of one player in either position, which, to me, could be pretty risky if Falcons do start focusing towards one of those areas a little bit more, especially based off of the spawns, potentially. But for now, anyways... It'd work out for Entropic thanks to a big play out of the hands of Crad, who only has six kills, sure, but the, the couple kills in that previous round being very important, and also the frag to kick off the retake a few rounds back as well. W without those, they'd be at most on two rounds right now. Here we go. Quick pause is done. It's Falcons, I would imagine. But they don't have a lot to work with after the pause. They'll be mostly focused on going into this next gun round where... NBK is actually still going to be a bit short on money, so a bomb plant would be nice. It would be good to get a little bit of something out of this round. One P250, one flashbang. Potential for a short plant. If you can deal with Crad. Instead, it's going to be out of mid. No utility, just swinging this dry, and they do catch a little bit of a timing. Crad now should be able to react as they swarm towards that window. Forrester with the opening kill. Crad finds a couple more. There's the single frag from the Python lock. But that P250's down. Mac is on his own. Amir will very quickly deal with him. So no bomb plant, unfortunately, Dean. A kill to their name at the very least. And you can't really ask much more than that when you're on those kind of P250 solo buys. Yeah, no, this is not an easy map to get anything done with those pistols. So many tight <laughs> choke points that you're just running into and getting mowed down in. You just... You basically need to keep moving and hope you can manage to cover enough ground that you're just no longer all grouped up, that you can just get mowed down, as we've seen happen. A couple of players really leading the way for Falcons right now. 11 for Python, 10 for Mistua, and then 3 and 4 for uh, the dude are remaining 3 players. So, see who steps up to carry a little bit of extra weight as this T-side goes on as well, because they could be the difference makers, especially with Mac now managing to find an opening kill already on the Crad as well. I mentioned he's been pretty important, pretty impactful in these rounds. Nickelback, this aggression could be a bad idea. Ooh. Yeah, he was inches from death, almost certainly right there. Even if he somehow got away with a kill, there's no way he wouldn't have been traded. I'm going to go for the play out of long here, actually. Pot flash to try and get Nickelback off the angle, but Anakez is there to back him up. With two quick kills, they drop the bomb outside of these long doors. And this, again, is where it gets very awkward. The smoke a little deep. Second Molotov to buy more time. The man advantage that Mac have found wrestled back an MBK. Well, this fine could be everything. They know they left short open. They know there's a possibility of timings. But MBK, head down, has caught the gap. There's a freebie on the board, and it's a question of his trigger discipline. How much does he want to get from this situation? How much is he willing to risk? He's going to go for just about everything here. Anakes turns, but not quickly enough. It's a rough old spray. And as a result, long control is still there. Now, Maka starts to activate in mid. Catches the rotation of Mir. And it's all on Nickelback, really, to lock this bomb down. A wasteful spray. MBK punishes. And Forrester on 23 HP has got to do what will surely be impossible. 18 seconds left. He's going to look to deny on the cross here. Spots the head out. Tapping away, though, not quite able to get it done. Ten seconds left, still possibilities, but the nade's not quite going to do it. The bomb will go down, and at this point, the save will be called. Falcons will have their sixth, but this is the dust, too, that we all know and love. It is getting very scrappy in these rounds. Yeah, I'm, I'm loving it, but we've got to remember this is Falcons' map choice. So if Entropic can just keep a scrappy, if they can come out with even six or seven on the CT side, then that's not a terrible half, and... 
being in, uh, being in control of the pace down on the T side is something that tends to be preferable to in Tropic as well. Uh, they, they shine a little bit more there. So I think six or seven is a, uh, definitely a hat they could work with. But we'll see. Because right now the economy is going to be all spent in this following round. If that goes south, I can go up towards seven likely against an eco with an eighth coming their way. And at that point, it starts to look a little bit more... A little bit more dim for Entropic, so they will like they would like rather to again just immediately trade back here if possible. Mm -hmm. And it's not a bad buy. The nades look pretty limited, but in terms of the actual firepower, you've got an op in play. When MP9 I think just dropped the nickel back, that looks to be the only real weak link within the buy. And the nades are even a little bit better than I thought they'd be. The real problem they've got now is working out how they want to take that mid control because the Maca pick onto Crad was a direct oh. punishment of him looking short DC. and jump peeking that short control. Looks like this is the reaction, and I'm not sure, like you said, that Mir necessarily got spotted there on that cross. Forrester continuing to do work through the smoke brings Hadji down low to open this round up. And they're nading well, this lower. mid control. I think they know. This is huge, though. The mid control they've got. Look at how they're starting to pincer into this now. Nickelback's looking to join the party. And with three players into the upper tons here, one low on HP as well. If they can hold this ground, if they can buy some time, it would be everything. But Mir flushed out well by the molly will be dealt with. MBK, the one to get the kill, a team effort certainly. And now it gets very interesting because again, Entropic are not willing to let go of this mid control quietly. Krad is still working on short. Nickelback is still close to those mid doors and they're flashing themselves into peaks. They want to try and take this proactively. It's a rough old fight for both Masuta and Krad and it's going to end all even. With 50 seconds left, they back out of it. Yeah, couldn't really afford to stick around any longer. Unfortunately, Nickelback still stuck on the MP9 with the M4 lost in lower tunnels as well. Could come true. Useful, though, with the health onto a few of these players. It's going to be Crad instead who gets tested on mid. Manages the spray down of two with the assistance of Nickelback, who actually did get the second finish. Apologies. Fortunately, though, ended up putting himself a bit too wide to hang on to his life before being traded, oh, and Haji puts killed. off the mid-rotation. That's a big problem, because now Forrester can't get across to help out, really, and you've got Anarkes left alone on the bomb site. Two players to deal with, and well, let's see if the up can get it done. It's already won. Flash into the air. Time getting low. There's only seven seconds on that clock as the no-scopes are being missed on both sides. The USP can't get it done. A couple of dinks. He himself, I think, was dinked. Oh, he didn't have time anyway. Oh, it's all over the place. I lost track myself. Okay, never mind, you got it. That was one way. The most hectic round I've casted in a <laughs> long time. You could hear your inner color commentator really scream in there as it was like, ah! too many things. I had called out the time as seven seconds, but then so much happened in the next six seconds that I forgot about the time. <laughs> <laughs> the hectic nature of Dust 2 continues to deliver. He got dinked by the Glock and was on like 10 health and somehow still managed to to pull the health of his opponent back to like the same pretty much yeah. before going down somehow with the, the USP. It was That was a crazy fight. One bullet either way could change it. It's a big round to win as well. Like you mm. said, if this one that one had gone south, then the economy breaks, opportunity for Falcons to really stabilize. Instead, you look at the Falcons, they've got... Well, the bits and bobs they managed to save across. Hadji's money is pretty disjointed. Maka's even more so as he saves the AWP. A couple of Deagles in support. And again, if they can get through this round cleanly, it's an opportunity for Entropic to start re-establishing themselves on their opposition's map pick, as we have to keep on saying. Maka flirting with the initial pick into upper B, not spotting him out, though. Forrester just a little quick on the draw. And again, time starting to become a factor. This seems to be a significant bugbear of the Falcons. 50 seconds, 45 on the clock as MBK just spamming a little bit into the short control. This is a nice off-angle boost here. Does leave the B site again a little vulnerable, however, and it's Forrester over there. Up against four of these T side players, Mir will get the opening pick, so that's the lurk dealt with, but how much can Forrester realistically get done? Well, plenty. Three quick kills. Masuta on a recovered rifle will get no damage whatsoever. Seventh round found comfortably, and that's exactly what Entropic needed. They're actually starting to find some control in this now. We did say there was a, a bit of a danger for both sides if either of them lost their own map choices. If Falcons lose out on this one, then they're in a rough spot where they have to steal back Mirage. 
and then also have to try and steal away overpass as well, which looks to be pretty heavily favored for Entropic. So they do not want to let that happen. Obviously, I'm getting a bit ahead of myself here. It's 7-6. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> considering they did have what looked to be pretty good control in the early stages of this map, it's definitely faltered. And the back and forth has now just begun to, to favor the CTs somehow, which isn't too common of an occurrence. The nade's a bit too deep, I think, to really have any impact indeed. Small bit of damage on Haji, which might help in the long run with those rifles just cleaning things up. But it's not going to make a big difference. And actually, a rifle gets handed away now. Not without some damage, at least being done to it. Okay, Python catches the long aggression, which at that point just seems unnecessary. You know you're not up against much. That's just being kill hungry. Puts them under pressure as well. Rifle not yet recovered, admittedly. I think it was the SMG that went out long. But at this point, even three on three, as you said, rifle in the hands of Haji. Essentially a deagle to be dropped across the Maka as well. This could still get dangerous. Just under a minute left on the clock, though, for this T-side to try and work something out. They're waiting out any more aggression, hoping that maybe there's another pick to be had. Problem is, in Tropic, not biting whatsoever. Crad as well. Doing a very solid job of just maintaining his utility, not throwing out those smokes too soon. Making sure that if we do get into a late round situation, he's got that util. The ability to stall for a little more time with 30 seconds left could be everything. Nickelback should spot this out early indeed, drops off the angle and now Crad with that utility should be able to buy some time for now though. It's an isolated fight up towards the site, Crad and Nickelback with one apiece before they trade down and Haji on low HP is going for the flank around 13 seconds left, he's going to bait Nickelback in. One on one, 10 seconds, Nickelback yet to bite but Haji's got to find this kill. No more time for the plant, it's headshot or bust and it's a rough old fight. Entropic get away with murder on that one. Goes down to the last man, but they somehow get it over the line. Nickelback's been looking good in the last few performances I've seen from Entropic as well. Sometimes can be a little bit inconsistent, but mm -hmm. the last few games have, he's been up there towards the top of the scoreboard for them. And right now you're just getting such a team effort from them as well. Forrester, I mean, is towards the bottom on nine kills. He's like, you know what? You were doing fantastic when you had Hooch instead of me, so I I'm going to chill on the, the kills a little bit and let you get a bit more of those done. That was a crazy mid-push, though. We haven't seen anything like that in a while. No smokes or anything being put down either. Just completely dry as Maka catches the headshot on towards Crad, and, well, this is looking like we might have a seventh round that he salvaged from Falcons. Oh, Mir caught by the molly as he looks to aggress as well. Push upon push being punished here by the Falcons, and as you said, feels comfortable at this point. Three on five conversion should be well within the playbook. And again, Falcons just willing to settle off of this. The Zaiwu smoke, this goes towards the hinge. A nasty little lineup, this one as well, if he gets it right. Which he doesn't. <laughs> Drop short of the mark, but... Falcon still with that advantage, still with the control as well. Forrester actually caught through the smoke by Last MBK. Well. That's harsh. Last bullet before the reload. And yeah, at this point, Nickelback swings. Masuta deals with him. Mir last up. What have you got for us, mate? Finds the first at the very least. A good spray for two, but it is going to be 8 7 as we head to the half. The narrowest of leads for Entropic. And that is, well, it's typical, Dust 2. It's exactly what you expect, right? Both of those teams could have quite happily had 10-5 halves, but neither were quite able to wrestle control when they had the firepower advantage. Yeah, I mean, there was plenty of opportunities on both sides for the, the complete break to come in. I mean, we, there was multiple force buys, at least with weaker weapons and lacks utility and such, but neither team was really able to get the full-on break until it got towards the end, and you did kind of see uh, it, it, the money for Entropic get a little bit more awkward, obviously, going in towards those final three rounds. But good recovery, seven on the half is still not a bad result to be coming out with. I don't think it's exactly what they were hoping for after starting the half on a much better note for sure. But uh, either way, it's still a good position to be in as they swap over to that second half. Before they get to that point, though, we are going to go ahead and take a quick break, guys. So stick with us as soon as we come back that second pistol round. We'll be going live.
Alright, we are back into the action. 8 7 Tropic with the narrowest of leads as they head on to the T side of Dust 2. And a side that they'll be hoping to steal away here, Dean. Yeah, this, it really is still a map that could go either way, though, so I'm not going to make any early judgments. As we said, though, I think Falcons have a bit more on the line with this being their choice and Mirage and Overpass to follow. Mac is straight up mid with the support of NBK as well. It has been noted, at least the position of one, but NBK is too Shot. quick on that trigger. Matt has no hope as he peeks through. He just delays a small bit to let the push come up long. The problem is there's still a player cut off, so there's only three of them actively working towards this bomb site. Mean and the numbers for Falcons can potentially still overwhelm them, as you can see. Scrappy old fight. They're going to go for the bomb down here. Multiple bodies, multiple low HP. In fact, but Masuta doing what he can. They've got to buy time now. This flank has got to work out, and it's all they've got left. Mir to do it all in the 1v3, and he only lands the one. Falcons, as you said, just overwhelming that site with bodies. Anikes had his chances, had his opportunities to find the kills. Couldn't get anything done. Punishment comes in. The round goes to where the Falcons. We level everything out at eight apiece, and suddenly... It's all to play for. Tied up. All right. They were some nasty headshots, though, across the board. Just chaos. Yeah. I obviously not on par for Entropic, but it's not terrible. And well, I mean, I was going to say the scout has a chance to do some early damage and make your life easier for the Galils and the Mac 10s. That's though the Lil in the hands of Forrester just straight out long. A very late long corner smoke, which is a little bit surprising, but that worked the Forrester's favor. And it makes Mas uh, Masuta, as he's fallen away, maybe have a false sense of security. Doesn't check behind them anymore. He's seen the smoke go down, thought he'd have a second to get around that corner, but no. Hit drop had already come true. It's a five on three very quickly for Entropic and Falcon's pistol round. The, the hope that came from anyway right, uh, might be taken away very, very quickly. That early brawl out long, always such a dangerous thing. And as you said now, two-man advantage for Entropic to work with. They slow it right down, put all the pressure back on the shoulders of Falcons, who have committed very wholeheartedly to this initial rotation. Nobody on that B-bomb site at all. And only now, Haji starting to wander back towards mid. But it is going to be an A-site stack. And for the time being... That is going to be the correct call. 48 seconds left on the clock. So Entropic, without any info onto any other portion of the map, really are stuck into this A-site execute. Two remaining smokes will get them across. And here we go. 30 seconds left. All three players for the CT side up towards this A-site. Going to be a three on four inside of the site itself as Prad waits for a flank that will never materialize. And... It starts to get really awkward now. Haji wants to try and aggress. 20 seconds left. If he can deny the bomb, that would be huge. A dink up, but it's not going to be enough. Maka, an awkward fight in mid. Meanwhile, and at this point, it's all about exiting. It's all about getting maybe a little more damage before you fly away. Two players dinked up for this T side. is nightmarish for the Falcons. MBK able to grab one on the exit, but Crad immediately trades his teammate down. Despite these low HP bars, Entropic going to keep four men up, keep four rifles alive. And that is a nightmare scenario for Falcons. The M4A1S is just betraying them at critical moments. Oh, just dominated in that round as well. I mean, they come off such a fantastic pistol round, such a great retake where all the headshots are clean. I'm sure they were all feeling really confident coming through just to get destroyed by the weaker weapons with really no fight at all being put up, especially in the beginning of the round. Good work from Forrester, good work just all around the board, and well, let's see what the response from Falcons is. Again, it's the mid-aggression. It's pretty much a full investment. Mac has kept money, sure, as has Python a small bit, but everyone else down to pretty much zero. Tropic. Battle of the Forces always looks worse for the CT side. Yeah. Every time. And Tropic just don't want to give them an inch right now either. I like the idea. Playing slow. They've got the long control now without any real contest. MBK on the scout deep in towards CT. This mid control, really the only thing Falcons have got. 
They're going to have to leverage it heavy here as the utility comes out. Mir starts to deal with the mid players, and that'll actually draw the possibility of a flank backwards. Maka will find one, does manage to catch that rifle in towards middle. The problem is his teammates just aren't staying alive long enough for him to really get anything done with it. And indeed, the call is to just back out of that situation. MBK very keen to get a little bit more out of this scout before he does decide to retreat and join his teammates. There's a couple of bits and bobs being saved, and that keenness is going to be his undoing. Forrester deals with it. Maka will save the M4 for a, a nicer day. Haji, he's got full armor behind that 5.7 as well, so it's not a bad save whatsoever. Maka presumably still has his P250 in his holster there, which he can drop across as well. Indeed, he does. And give them a little bit of something to work with into the next round, Falcons, because at this point, it's double digits on the board for Entropic, and you don't want to be just rolling over and giving them an 11th round. At the very least, you want to have a little bit of bite. And maybe take a couple of those rifles away because look at that T-side economy. It is really starting to blossom. Yeah, as you said, at least they have a small bit of a challenge. Investment behind it, though, is going to be pretty much zero. So while, as you said, they're going to try and stop Entropic from getting towards 11, I do not love their chances of doing so should in theory be a relatively clean round for Entropic, a chance to keep on building on top of an economy that already looks really good for three of the players, decent for a fort. Let's this see, the 5-7. Yeah, this looks like could be perfect. Ooh. No, it's red by Nickelback. He was ready for it. At the very least, cautious. Expecting the weaker weapons to try something like that. Every time I see a 5-7 on an angle like that, I get a little bit nervous. Shivers down my spine. Awkward fight for the FAMAS, but Crad gets the better of the rifle anyway. And at this point, like you said, this round was never going to be anything spectacular. CT side just hoping maybe a couple of kills from the save bits and pieces. Thus far, finding nothing, however, in Masuta. Just the USP does manage to find one. Nickelback next up will deal with him. But they won't mind that, in all honesty, I don't think. Falcons, they get at least a kill out of the round. A little bit of something, a little bit of hope, maybe. This is the round that now matters. Three round gap so far for Entropic. Falcon's able to buy up into it, but there are going to be sacrifices. Just the one kit, limited utility. This round has to be perfect for the CT side to continue having impact and to wrestle back control of their map pick. Yeah, pretty much now or never, though. Bons, bons weren't all that great, I don't think. So, yeah, they're not even going to beat this Molly out, unfortunately. Oh. Back, takes a tiny bit of damage while boosting up. Not too much, thankfully, but... They're ready to move over the top of this smoke. The nade going in. Clearly that had been heard. It really doesn't do as much damage as I thought it was going to when I seen it go forward. But either way, down to 64 and 57 there for Nickelback and Forrester respectively. It's still not a good start to the round. The only real positive I can see immediately is the fact that Falcons are already left with only a single smoke and a single HE. Did they get the, the smoke this time? I'm curious. It did. It looked like it landed. Nice. And you can see Crad working with it as well. Just peering underneath it for the mid control. Which thus far isn't being contested at all. Falcons have opted for aggression on aggression. Haji and Maka pushing through these upper tunnels. Crad is conscious of it, but he turns his back at the worst possible moment. And now this flank should get everything. Nickelback spotted. Dink down. That's bomb as well. Crad smoked off from the aggression. Can't afford to commit through it. An advantage found for the first time in a long time by the Falcons, and with just 40 seconds left on the clock, it hamstrings in Tropic. There's only one site they can really commit to, surely. They've got no control anywhere else. There's a flank coming through Spawn, for heaven's sake. And Haji should get more from this. The timings are going to be everything, but there's three players trying to work their way out mid, and Haji is currently staring down the barrel of it. Forrester as well, looking completely the wrong way, but he turns on a dime. Finds a big headshot that opens up a chance. 17 seconds left. It's now or never. MBK continuing to lock down mid. They've run out of time. There's no way they can get this bomb anywhere near a site with 10 seconds left. Maka just has to pick them off at the pass. And that bomb still stuck in the upper tunnels. Will have to retreat in Tropic. They get their numbers wrong. They mess up the math. And now Anakez and Mir have got to try and hold on to these rifles. They kind of kneecap themselves, leaving us so long and just... At that point, becoming flustered with the time, trying to force their way into a bomb site with so little info to work with. It's a lifeline, though, for Falcons, one that hopefully they can build on top of now. Despite that being a pretty, uh, pretty clean round as well, they really don't build up too much money. Just because they have to go back into the nades on 
for the nades right around pretty much everyone mm -hmm. because they had nothing. So not a very comfortable round by any means, and Tropic still have the opportunity to return, and they'll have another bite coming after this one, even if things do go south. So the pressure is going to remain on the shoulders of Falcons for quite a while. Deep nade. I'm wondering if we're going to see this tunnel's oh, aggression. It's definitely man. being considered. As you say, Mirna has crept out mid as well, so... There's a, a couple places that we could potentially see contact at this point. If we see the tunnel's aggression come true as well, that could start to force a rotation if it's punished, which could then allow for Mir to get even more done. So let's see how things could spiral right now. And Tropic have started to pick the gaps in this defense. Oh. That early lack of mid presence. Now the aggression, as you said, starting to be considered into the upper tunnels. Krant is oh, here. Do Throwing the smoke will give the game away, though. And now Maka knows exactly where to scope in. So Easy kill. Disgusting timings. Really unfortunate, you have to say. And it leaves again in Tropic in a bit of a no-man's land here. Smoked off from the short control. Python holding that down. They've got mid short, but there's noise to confirm that position. So they'll continue to try and push through with Python. Forrester at least able to trade. Man advantage still there, though. And what do Entropic do with 30 seconds left on the clock? They're a man down. They've got the utility to execute whichever way they please, but there's bodies inside of this A site. They're going to have to clear on down. Masuta plays it smart. 20 seconds left. Hides behind the molly. Burns in it, in fact, but still gets his kill. Flashed in for more. He'll continue to find damage. All three for Masuta. And in Tropic, again, felled before they can hit the site. Looks like we've got a game on our hands once again. As I mentioned, there's still a bit of a buy still coming true. Uh, weakness there for the for Nickelback at the very least. So with that, they will call in a, a, a pause, try and find out exactly what what, what they want to do with this. But I hear it's it was a tech, tech. pause. Yeah, it's I wasn't a sure. Tech. Is it though? <laughs> what do you, mean? you You never. You always have to doubt the teams online. I think in this level of tournament, we should be fine. Though. No, team. We this trust is, everyone implicitly. There's this games the sometimes where there's just too many drinks and stuff being spilled. You know, I'm not saying it's happening now. We've just, we've had those games. <laughs> nah, they still have their pauses either way. So they would have used those if necessary. Either way, they do get to chill for a moment, reset the mind after losing a couple rounds in a row pretty decisively as well. So hopefully they can come back in fresh in a moment and whatever issue they're having. Is not going to be a continued one. I'm waiting for someone to drop out. That's what's going to happen, right? Yeah, it feels that way, certainly. I tell you what, though, it does feel a little bit like, and we spoke about it slightly in the pregame, I don't know if Anakez speaks Russian. I presume not. But this feels like they're struggling with comms, right? It feels like that classic, there's a little bit of difficulty communicating things around the place. There's a little bit of difficulty getting it done. And therefore, everything's taking an extra five seconds, right? You're running out of time a little bit quicker than you were. The utility's getting thrown a bit dodgily. Things just aren't quite clicking in the way you'd expect. And you do have to wonder if that's down to comms because it feels that way from just our perspective, right? Just watching it through. Well, there we go. Pause removed. So we are getting right back into it. Python stats obviously have reset. I'm wondering how he's looking overall. One and ah, four since Anakis the reconnection anyway. Can speak Russian. Can speak Russian. Okay. There you go. Maybe his family went from Russia to Israel or whatever. Because I think a lot of them do have like second languages, don't they? They certainly do. Have to see if they can get it through here though. Mere flying Ooh. out of long utility to get him into Heavy that pit, but Mac is watching it. Forrester gets the one in response, but flash through the smoke. Chaos continues. We'll level things out at three on three. Maka still posted in towards the car. Finally, the Molotov comes in. The counter smoke is there, however. Missed shot. And Maka will surely have to fall away off the back of this. All of the CT side again rotating in near enough immediately. But it's a three on three with pit control established and a missed shot in response from Anakes. Three on three, though, and look at this response from Falcons. Charge up mid with two of those players. The opt-in supporting them from the back, and considering Andropic are not moving very quickly at all, if they take this out towards long, they have a good opportunity of catching the flank completely unexpected. And they're not even going to go for it. No, never mind. Oh, okay. Reconsidering once again, they were going to send a second player back up towards long. Instead, now just leaving one to hold that flank. The other two heading up short, and it's almost going to be a retake. 
Almost certainly, rather. Pretty much a retake classic, right? Two on short, one out long. You could set the spawns up in your own server at this point. Bomb will go down. Little bit of utility to work with over on the CT side of things. Smoke will get them out of the early angle. Molotov will disrupt the plant, make it difficult for Nickelback to survive. And Crad, top of the smoke is picked. MBK goes down low. But that long flank is still an issue and still Haji is working his way out. Timing on this is everything. Anakes has to find the kill and does. Now the issue is the split, but Anakes is up for it. Hits the second shot on the flick. Amaka left in the 1v2. Got to split the angles. He bakes the shot, takes a tag from inside of sight, though. And at this point, there's really nothing more he could do. Trying to hit the shot on the shoulder peak of Anakes, but being given nothing. And the three-on-three -three retake will go the way of Entropic. A 12th round, a much-needed 12th as well, as Falcons just start to feel their way back into this one. Yeah, nasty shots by Anarkez, though. The first one was a little bit weird. He's seen him for a while, and he just wanted to be 100% sure he got the shot, though, despite seeing his arms. And so she was like, oh, come on, give me your full torso. Oh, wait, you're not even looking at me. I don't blame him. I really don't. Especially with the ping. Not sure exactly what his ping is, but it, it can't be ideal. Here we go. He has a good spawn for long this time around. You will see again a pretty heavy presence, I think, going in that direction early on. Flash going forward for two of them to try and take a bit of a peek, but well, they're just going to put the smoke down, Whoa. so I think they're going to stop Entropic from taking the control. Never mind. The op for a second was tempted to jump out and was like, nah, better not. And then Forrester was like, really? Fine, I will. Let me get out there, get some presence, and you can follow me out, and we'll with that, pretty much take full long control, just as Falcons themselves make the, I would say, perfect column response to go take short instead. It's a good counter. The problem is, again, they've gone heavily into it, so long to A is actually wide open right now. Little doing Tropic, no. And again, we start to play this dance of timings. Mir is on a flank of his own from upper tunnels. Haji is thinking about clearing this, though. If he can find Mir, then this again looks one-dimensional, but he doesn't. And that forces the CT side to rethink just a little bit. They have to commit some resources in towards mid, which leaves just Macker and MBK inside of the site as Mir finds another Python. We'll finally deal with him, but here we go. A site the target. Smokes to give Macker a little bit of breathing room, a little bit of opportunity. Still plenty of time and plenty of utility, though, for Entropic as Forrester. Swinging wide deals with two, and Python won no choice. He'll have to back away. He looks across forlornly at the economy of the CT side and realizes that rifle is more important than throwing yourself at a 1v4 again. A nice opening set for Entropic and Falcons just caught out by that flank of Mir in towards under. Grabs them a couple of very critical kills, drags the CT rotations away and buys them an A site. Seems like Entropic have got back into the flow now over these last couple of rounds. It's not going to slow down. A 14th is almost certain, even with the save them 4 being carried, for, uh, carried forward, rather. There's at most maybe a few pistols being upgraded. There we go. Okay, Ooh. he will manage to save it at least. The upgrades to an AK. Nice work from Python. But again, that AK is the only rifle they're going to be working with. Maybe you get a pistol or so on Maka, but even then you don't really want to spend much because he needs to get that Apu. So... Yeah, it doesn't really look like there's going to be much put behind this rifle at all. A 14-10 scoreline should be almost a given. And then Falcons are just going to have to be flawless from this next gun round onwards. This is starting to feel very rough indeed. As you said, this one should be a given. Forrester confirms just a default pistol out towards long. And at this point, just about the intelligence of Entropic... They've worked Mir into a solid position in mid MBK. Don't think you'll be expecting this. The spam through as well, just to bait the idea that there's nobody home. MBK will start to swing, but the B site has been insieged in the meanwhile. Mir gets the freebie. And indeed, this will be a 14th round. Just a couple of pistols to bodyguard that one AK-47, which does find a kill at the very least. Python. Able to deal with one, but again, you have to ask the question, wouldn't have that AK been worth saving? Anakes pins it to the back wall, so there will be none of that whatsoever, and it's do or die time for Falcons on their map pick at us too. They find themselves four rounds down and in need, as you said, of a flawless comeback to stop the map point. And staring down the barrel of Mirage as well, it all stacks up against them. 
Yeah, I thought Watch Strange, the AK would have been quite useful right now. A bit of extra firepower and a few extra nades, that probably would have come from it as well. No matter way, they need full focus on this moment, because if this round goes south, they will likely not have another gun round to put up a fight. Krat, I think he heard those steps coming in. Mm hmm. Eeks just as NBK himself falls back away onto a slightly more passive angle, so they're not going to spot each other for now, but Mir took it into one of his favorite positions. Seen him work this spot once or twice already. How many times has he found that gap? Found that edge to work oh, his way out? Well okay, NBK. Takes the tracers, follows him through. A little bit of a fortuitous kill, but Falcons will take it. Slightly wobbly smoke. Mir throws the first, baits the Pika Haji, then the second comes in, fully locking out this mid B split. And you can see Falcons start to panic as well. They know MBK is solo. They're going to charge through the smoke to try and support him, but MBK holds firm. On 7 HP from the utility, he finds another kill. And now that swarming starts to have its own consequences because the A site is currently wide open. There is timings left, right, and center for Entropic. Python really has to lock this one down now. Two players headed into his crosshairs. He spots the head, taps away. One for one trades, decent. The bomb won't drop down. And now Forrester, if he can deal with the long player, buys them a chance. Two on two, Maka. Trying to go through, trying to jump Kukli, the man on sight. He baits out Forrester, and it's all on Anakes, who punches the numbers in. The Kuklis don't land. Support coming in from short now as Anakes tries to isolate the fight. Low HP on MBK. It won't matter. It's a rough old fight, though. Maka's out of ammo. The P250 gets one. MBK, they don't know he's low. Anakes will stick to the orb, but he won't clutch it up. The veteran gets it. It's a rough old fight again between the two orpers. As soon as those pistol comes out, it gets ugly. But it will be an 11th. It will be something for the Falcons. Jesus, what was that? If he knew he was low as well, he could have just stuck to the pistol. Ah, uh, didn't quite realize. Did he land the leg shot as he was dropping down off of the, the, the wall onto the guy on ramp? I think Maka was already low. He was already low, okay. That would have made it a bit more incredible how close it was, but yeah, that pistol <laughs> fight was, was awkward. That was some, some Carrigan stuff right there. At least Bice in this case, coming. he's been shot back at. That was making it a little less silly, but yeah, three rounds in the difference. A double up setup in here for Falcons as well being carried over. This is a hefty investment for sure, but limited for masses on everyone else. Get the long control though. The utility dropped to enable it. Problem is, again, they've invested, as you said, very heavily into these double orps, and it's meant they're slim on util. So after taking the long control, they've still, well, no smokes remaining at all, only one more Molotov to stall things out. Handful of HE, sure, but not the ideal nade for a CT side. Forrester, let's take a bit of chip. They're actually going to continue aggressing. Masuta's managed to thread the needle here. Forrester was on the crack angle. He looks for the AWP, but Mac has got him. An advantage, and now they know they've got to up the pace. They've lost their long control. The second arm of this A site hit, if they want to go there, is gone. They're going to actually call the fake instead. Look to double back again. The Lurk smokes out. Haji with a lot to do. Nickelback has found one up on A. How much can Haji get done in towards mid is the question. The answer's none. And now MBK solo on the AWP is under siege, but he's got Masuta flanking. That cuts off Mir with the bomb in middle. If he can find this second kill, this round is on. And indeed he does. Masuta down to 19, but he gets it. And with 30 seconds left, we're into a 1v2. And Masuta's having none of it. Three kills in the round. The long control is everything. Falcons have their 12th, and it's a 12th that breaks the economy of Entropic as well. Absolutely critical from Masuta. Yeah, I thought the FAMAS was going to limit them, perhaps, but no, Masuta makes it look easy. He gets an upgrade onto an AK now, and have they finally bumped Entropic onto a full eco? It looks like they have. A few pistols at most being bought up. It's going to be 13 for Falcons. They win that next gun round. Suddenly, they have a chance to even get into the lead and secure at the very least an overtime. So Entropic have got to be worrying. As I had said, the last day when we seen them up against Sprout, they had to fight in from behind a few times, but they also left some pretty decent leads of their own slip away. And that's how we, ooh, that's how we ended up going the full three maps. That nade was nasty. Some less damage than I thought it would. Mir is the only player with armor, actually. So yeah, you got a little bit lucky in that regard. Oh, that's bad for Maka. Somehow survives. Okay. That's fortunate, to be honest. Very fortunate. Six HP, three Glocks staring him down. I think there was a Deagle in the mix there as well. They're going to go straight out A. 
just try and charge up short at this point, which does put them in a bit of a firing range with the flashbangs over solid. Brad is last up and nothing to do whatsoever. Falcons get through it cleanly. All five players kept up. And in Tropic, well, they're under a lot of pressure here. Things really starting to look rough and they take the pause because they need to start thinking this one through. They've got their golden goose. Their opportunity to steal their opposition's map pick. They're watching it slowly fade away. Yeah, I mean, it's... It's not even being that much of a creep either. It's been running up on them. Falcons have started taking these last few rounds pretty convincingly for themselves. Obviously, he needed some some solid individual players from the likes of Masuta, but he's been happy to step up and deliver, as you can see from the scoreboard. Now, they went from a pretty well-balanced scoreboard between everyone to having Masuda on 25, NBK and Mac on 16. Uh, Python had a reconnect at one point, so I'm not sure exactly what his kills are. But Hachi's having a really rough game, which is kind of surprising to me. Normally, one of the players I'd hope to see up towards the top of that scoreboard and has been over the last top. few months. Python is, Python's is he? right up the top. I think Masuta just overtook him in the last round. Mm. I couldn't remember what he, said, what he was at before to reconnect. Oh. No, not quite. Looks like he was going to have that one a little bit too late on the shot. Unfortunately, he just about fails, and they're heavy with this long control. They have three players ready to fight, and a fork who was there with Ned supporting. It's been where Entropic have got a lot done, right? Just sneaking out through those smokes into a timing, taking the control. Now they've lost that avenue. The T side starts to look a lot tamer. Question is, what's the response? Molotov goes deep towards long again, just denying all of that control. Two man mid play as well from the Falcons. They're aware that the B site has been a target. Maka working his way into these doors. Should have Forrester dead to right. Plays ahead of the flashbang, but it's a missed shot. A rare miss, but a miss nonetheless. And Forrester compounds the punishment. Two quick kills. And now the CT side of Falcons have got some big decisions to make. Nickelback holding down the flank. Crad with him. They demolish it. They needed one key in Tropic. One entry, one opportunity. Forrester gives them two. They take it with open arms. And at this point, 15-13, two map points for Entropic to try and shut this one down. The buy will still be coming in for Falcons, but there's going to be sacrifices. There's no big green for Maka. It's going to be rifles all the way. It's going to be heartbreaking if they fall short here just towards the end of it again on their own map choice here as well for Falcons. Ash up next is not going to be much easier for them. Entropic do tend to shine there. I like this pinch in towards the tunnels, at least taking a lot of control early on. It hasn't been spotted either, so see exactly what they're going to do with it now as Python gets the initial kill. Didn't quite spot the second man, I think, getting down up close, but they're going to have to deal instead with the two players who are just charging out through tunnels and towards the spawn. Oh, timing. Freebie. Here spots out Haji, and now the aggression's being punished. Crad waiting for it. Deals with MBK. And this is where that aggression can start to betray you. Akka, playing with fire, has to stay alive. The man advantage is there for Entropic, and you can see they've slowed this whole round down on the basis that they know the aggression is coming. Nice shot from Maka, but immediately traded. Anakes finds another timely pick to keep the man advantage for Entropic, and you can see the CT side are desperate for information. They're going to push up mid here, and there's a real opportunity on this timing again for Masuta. He's got a potential backstab onto all three players if he continues this. Maka is going to go towards short. Try and give them a second prong. The Molotov will keep him out of contesting the plan. And Anakes has read it. Knows exactly where that flank is coming from. The Molotov holds off Maka. He needs to be the miracle man here. A 1v3 asks. The tap's not quite landing. He's tagged up. Half HP. He starts to fall away, but he's not got a choice. He's going to go pick up a different gun. Clearly, the AK is cursed. And he's got to try and find something here. But Entropic are giving him nothing. Anakes waits. Spots it, dispatches it, and Entropic have got it over the line. It goes a lot closer than it realistically should have done, but they get it done. They take their opposition's map pick, and now you do have to start looking at that Mirage with a very critical eye on the Falcons because the pressure is really on. Yeah, we, we know Mirage is one where it's definitely going to be favoring Entropic. Uh, we, we did say Falcons can play it for sure, though, and considering they did also claw their way back into that game as things were getting kind of dire in the second.